So how much free content do you have to create before you start getting more clients? Now, this is a question I'm asked very often. And here's my response to this. If you are creating free content primarily for the purpose of getting more clients, it might not work out for you. Here's why. Have you ever been part of a free Facebook group where um, you, know, you joined because it was a challenge of some kind and they gave free content in the, inside the Facebook group and then they started to sell to you. They started to say, oh, join our other program, et cetera, et cetera. Now, sometimes that works. Of course, some people join, but a lot of people are turned off by that. In fact, I wanna read to you a comment that someone posted on my Facebook page. And I thought that was quite you know, uh, indicative of this kind of thing. So this person said, I just unsubscribed from a group which I had been a member for only three months. She was sharing free content along with a few live videos. Eventually, she posted that people are taking advantage, not hiring her as a coach after consuming her content. Literally, she said, if you don't wanna move forward, just leave. So I left because I sensed anger and lack. Now, this was interesting because she said that she has been a member for three months. Now, three months is already quite patient for the group creator's part if her ulterior motive is to convert clients with that free group. By the way, this is why I also don't create free Facebook groups because I know that that is a, a, um, a potential resentment. So here's, here's, the, here's the core idea that I want to share with you today. When you create free content with the ulterior motive that, ah, this will get other people to buy from me, then you tend to start manipulating people or resenting when they don't buy from you in your own timeline. And yet, isn't that what much, much of the marketing is out there that we're taught to do? which is why we don't like most marketing because it tends to eventually become manipulative in some way, pushy in some way. And that's why a lot of us don't want to do marketing because we think, well, that's, that's how you're supposed to do it. You're supposed to pretend to be generous, pretend to be generous with free content, but then really secretly having the motives. So, well, I'm really creating this free content so that eventually you'll be indoctrinated and buy from me. Is there a better way we can approach content in a way that's better for our hearts, better for our spirits, and better for, guess what, our relationship to the audience. If you knew that you were always being set up for something, uh, how does that feel with the relationship? You're always being set up so that they can ask you for a favor. You're always being set up so that, you know, eventually you can help them with something. It doesn't feel good. And it doesn't feel good as an audience member to feel like I'm always being set up by somebody or for you to feel that way if, if you felt like I was always setting you up for something. So here's the thing. You have to realize that yes, creating free content has enormous benefits over time, but here is the problem. Nobody can tell you when those benefits will accrue to you. I'm sorry. Did you think that somebody could tell you, oh, yes, you, you create, you write this many articles and then that, you know, a hundred articles equals 10 clients. No, 10 videos equals three. No, nobody can, not the smartest business expert or marketing guru in the world can tell you whether your free content will ever generate a single sale or client. Nobody. And even if it might generate lots and lots of sales, nobody can tell you when that will happen. So how does it happen? How does it happen? So let me, let me first talk about the real purpose of creating content. And then I'll talk about, I'll, and then I'll share with you what the steps are to actually create clients or get sales by creating content, which let me just say, it should not be the main purpose of why you write or why you make videos and put them on social media. 
So why then do, why are we doing all this? If we're not going to get clients from all this, George, why, why am I bothering spending all this time writing articles and posting videos and, you know, recording podcast episodes? If I'm doing all this, I thought I was doing all this to get clients. Really? Are you really enjoying it? Because you know that if you're doing something, pretending to be generous, but not really being generous, you don't really enjoy it. So let me tell you, let me tell you what I, what's really worked for me and for a lot of people that I've helped as the purpose of creating free content. It is as a ministry to your audience as an, and, and also as an exploration of your calling. Let me say that again. The purpose of creating free content is as a ministry to your audience and as an exploration of your calling. And you can actually flip that around. It's, it's, a, it's an exploration of your calling and a ministry to your audience. Maybe that actually makes more sense. So what do I mean by exploration of your calling? How do you know what, your, what service or product you're supposed to provide to the world? Have you been trying to journal to figure that out? Have you been trying to work with a marketing coach? Can, can I, as a marketing coach, help you figure out what service or product you're supposed to provide or even what audience you're supposed to reach? Anybody who's telling you that they can help you figure out what audience to reach and what service to provide, they're not really telling you the truth. Because from my experience, 11 years of experience coaching hundreds of entrepreneurs, helping them eventually figure out what their service and their audience is. Here's the secret of it. Not an expert can tell you. Your journaling can't tell you either. The only way to figure it out is experiments with the audience, experiments with the world. That's the only way. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if, if you were waiting for your marketing expert to tell you, or you're waiting for your journaling and you know, your lots of lots of journaling to tell you what's, what you can finally provide to the world that's going to work. Now you could provide you, your journaling or your marketing expert can tell you all kinds of things, but you don't know if it's going to work until you put it out there humbly, you know, say, oh, will you buy this? And then see if they'll buy it. That's the only way. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's the only way. I can't tell you if your business is going to work. You can pay me all the money you want to hire me. I'm not going to take it because if, you, if you're going to pay me the money and spend time with me, I say, George, tell me if this is going to work. I'm going to say, I'm sorry. I'm not going to take your money. I'm not going to spend time with you. And I encourage you not to spend time and money with any other marketing expert. If, you're, if that's the answer you want, because the answer you're looking for is in your relationship to the audience. Only they can tell you. Now, if you say, well, George, that can't be true because then Aren't marketing experts supposed to be smart and tell me what's going to sell? Really? Is that, is that what you think? Well, let, let me ask you this question then. Why is it that the smartest investors in the world frequently invest in startups that fail? Have you ever thought of this question? The smart, the billionaires, the smart, the, the most business savvy and marketing savvy experts in the world frequently invest in startups that fail. What is venture capital? Venture capital is where they invest in as many startups as they can, knowing that most of them fail, but they don't know which ones. Did you know this? <laughs> Did you, I mean, if you didn't know the VC world, they invest in as many startups as they can, not knowing which ones are, I mean, they have hopes that certain ones will succeed, but they're frequently surprised. So, because if you think about it, if, if, it was, if it was so easy, well, not easy, but if it was possible for a marketing expert to say, oh yes, this product for this audience will succeed, then investing will always win. I mean, think about that. Isn't that true? Oh, because, oh, you marketing expert or you group of marketing experts can always tell us what product and service are gonna, oh, great, we'll always investing, you will always win. But that's not the case. Mark, that's why markets go up and down and investments often fail. Because nobody, only those of us who have a lot of marketing experience can tell you what the truth is, which is that it's always about the it's always about experimentation and the relationship with the mark, relationship with the audience. That's it. I can't tell you if your business is going to work. I'm sorry. I can't tell you if your content is going to ever give you one single client after a hundred years of writing. It could get you a client the next day. But the thing is this. If you are waiting 
for that to be the purpose. If, if, you're, if you're depending on that to be the purpose, if you're waiting for that client to come and say yes, before you say, well, my writing has been worth it or my videos have been worth it or my podcast has been worth it, then the whole time you're experiencing some form of chasing, maybe even suffering, but certainly a bit of anxiety and like holding your breath. So instead, if you think of content creation as this is an exploration of what my purpose is, I, I don't really know what my purpose is in, in, in terms of serving others. I mean, we have met multiple life purposes, but in terms of the purpose of our business, the purpose of our business is to provide a product that genuinely has a positive impact on those who buy it and, and is worth more than they paid. Right. I mean, if you talk about the purpose of business, right. Purpose of life is something else, but so therefore, how do you figure that out is by creating content and then in creating product and services and humbly asking if the audience will buy it and, and, and being curious and say, Oh, isn't it interesting? They bought that. Oh, interesting. Interesting. They didn't buy these other three, but they bought this one. Oh, isn't it interesting? So, the purpose of creating content is to explore your voice, to explore your thinking, to explore your life's experiences as related to your business. It helps you to become a better communicator. It helps you to figure out what those experiences were all about. It helps you to kind of put into a framework what your experiences and your learnings are. The more you create, the more of a framework you have. So it's to explore your calling, right? And then it's also as a ministry to, as you're exploring your calling just right now, for example, right this very moment, I'm exploring, how do I explain this? How do I really think about this, this experience that I've had with so many clients? How do I think about this? How do I, I'm exploring that right now with you. And in my explorations with myself and with you, hopefully you're also served in some way. Because of course, having thought about this probably more than you have, that's my job and that's, I've had so many experiences, then having been a few steps ahead of you, you'll, you'll benefit from saying, oh, okay, that's what's coming up for me. So content is an exploration of our calling. Even if not a single person reads it, we publish it, sure. But even if not a single person reads it, we will have benefited from having explored our experiences, our thoughts, our message, our framework. Does that make sense? If you come to understand this, it will change everything for you when it comes to content creation, because then you'll create for its own sake. You're not creating so that, oh my God, I have to do a chore because George told me to create and it's, 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 a, it's a marketing chore and it's supposed to get me clients. It's such a, that's, it's not fun to do that. It's much more fun to say, I'm creating because I know I'm doing public journaling, public journaling. I could do journaling privately, but I might as well journal publicly because it might help somebody else who's a few steps behind me. Because I've thought about this stuff more than most people have, whatever your thing is. So create free content as an exploration of your calling and as a ministry to your audience. All right, so that's the purpose. So then George, okay, great. But now that I know that that's the main attitude I'm bringing to this, that's the main benefit that this is going to have for me is exploration and ministry. W wouldn't it be nice if it also had the side benefit of building my business? Yes, it does. So let me tell you how that side benefit happens. Now, I've talked about in the past, you know, the seven disciplines of authentic business. If you haven't read that blog post, I recommend that you go to Google and type in the seven disciplines of authentic business. And essentially, that's how free content creates clients, okay? But let me just summarize it real quick for you. I'm not gonna go through all seven disciplines of authentic business. You can Google that and read it, but I'll just tell you a couple of them that relate here. So when you create free content with the right mindset and the heart set, with the, with the real purpose in mind, you also now want the side benefit of growing your business. Here's what you need to do. You need to make sure that content is seen by a lot of people a lot of the right people. And the easiest way that I know how to do how to get your content seen by a lot of the right people is by running Facebook and Instagram ads. Truly, 
I'm not, I'm not just saying that because I happen to teach courses on it. I do it myself for years and then I taught courses on it, right? So Facebook ads, I've done that for years. And then more recently I'm doing Instagram ads and I'm just loving it so much. It's getting a lot of the right audiences. So yes, create content because it's worth doing on its own. And then make sure it's distributed. Make sure that you're reaching a lot of the right people. You can't just be reaching 100 people or 200 people. You need to be reaching a few thousand people. And so, for example, by paying $10, let me hear me out, $10. Do you have $10 to advertise your business? I hope so. By paying $10 to use Facebook ads or Instagram ads, you can reach about a thousand of the right people. Let me say that again. You can reach a thousand targeted people who you're guessing are probably going to benefit from your content and your services. You can reach a thousand of them with $10 on Facebook or Instagram ads. Is that worth it to you? Of course. I hope so. That's why I recommend $30 a month, $30, $30 a month for Facebook and Instagram ads, either one or both. That means you reach about 3,000 people a month with your content or about 1,000 people three times a month. Okay. So creating content and then distributing that content with paid ads is the easiest way to get it out to the right people. Okay, creating, distributing. And the third one is as you start building an audience that is now engaging, they're liking your posts, maybe even commenting or sharing it, then you've got to take it to the next step, which is to do audience research. It's to realize that, oh my goodness, I am so privileged now to have people who are willing to pay me their attention. Let me say that again. You are not, first of all, you are not entitled to anything, right? As human beings, we're not entitled to anything other than our, our breath, right? Other than our breath and the beauty of this earth. And we're not even entitled to that. Take care of that. We only entitled to our breath. And then we don't have our breath, we die. <laughs> but you are only entitled to your breath. You're not entitled to people's attention on your content, nor to their purchase purchases. So when you have people paying you their attention, their attention and their time is nothing, is something they cannot get back. It is so precious. They can be reading a, a, a thousand other articles, they can be watching a thousand other videos, they can be listening to a thousand other podcasts, but they're listening or watching or reading yours. What a privilege. They're paying you their attention. Okay, so once you have people paying you their attention, you're so privileged by that, you can now ask them some questions. Okay, try to, try to message some of them and see if they're willing to answer some questions from you that will help your business. And maybe in exchange, you'll give them some service for free. Make it generous as, as much as you can. But you ask them questions like, really curious, in, in the journey of you trying to grow in this area, the area of whatever you talk about, in the journey of you trying to grow in this area, have you ever purchased any services or products that you can remember? Maybe it's counseling, maybe it's coaching, maybe it's you've, you've bought online courses or books. What have you purchased? And then they'll, they'll tell you and you're like, oh, wow, that's interesting because I hadn't thought of providing it in that way or I hadn't thought of framing my product in that way. Audience research allows you to figure out what people are buying, which is where their money is going, which is where you need to shift your service to, to speak to their commercial interest if you're going to make any money at all. Okay, so content creation, content distribution with paid ads, audience research, and finally, you need to offer humbly on a consistent basis you, what your service or product is. That's why you see me every single month. I'm offering you something every month. Oh, here's my next course. If you're interested, you can join me. If not, you know, you know that I have something else next month. So having a rhythm of offers where you're like curious and go, hmm, will you, will you like this? Is that something you're interested in buying? And not everyone, obviously not everyone's going to buy, but maybe a few people will buy when you have a small audience and then eventually more people will buy when you have a bigger audience and then more and more. So that's how creating Free content will get you clients. You first have to start with an understand, a deep understanding of the purpose of it all so you can enjoy yourself along the way. You can find meaning along the way without having to wait. No, I got a free client or I got a client for my free content. You don't have to wait all, for all that. 
you're enjoying yourself, you're having meaning along the way, you're consistent and you're distributing, you're doing some audience research and then you're humbly offering and then seeing what people buy and what people buy more of, you create more product and services around that. You, you don't even have to create product and services. You can sell other people's product services and earn a commission too. That's fine too. So, but the key is back to the original question is yes, creating free content will get you clients. It's just that nobody can tell you when, but you can have fun and meaning along the way if you find the right purpose in creating. So I hope that this is helpful. I'm George Cow, Authentic Business Coach. I'm always um, you know, very open to your comments and your questions. I love talking about the stuff about creating um, businesses with genuine heart, not just with lip service, heart and spirituality, but with genuine actual experience every day of, of enjoyment, of um, connection with our divine um, service. And with that, I'm just going to take a quick peek at see if there are any comments and questions in my Facebook Live. I want to thank those who are joining me, Jonah, Ariel, Marco, Sharon, Alicia. Ariel says, I love this idea of exploring our calling out in public. It takes the pressure off to be perfect. Absolutely. I um, mean, as you can see, that's why I'm always trying to model imperfect videos, right? And, um, you know, because I want you all to, to know that your true fans will find you perfect in a sense because you, you have the right energy signature match. Your true fans might not be my true fans or vice versa, but your true fans will like you and your presence just as you are. All right, I wish you well and I'll see you in the next video.